Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash just no mill. In today's episode. MIL kicking us out via attorneys. MIL kicking us out, an update. MIL kicking us out, we found a place. MIL kicking us out, just a vent. MIL kicking us out, we've left. MIL kicking us out, the drama continues. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. MIL kicking us out via attorneys. We haven't spoken in 13 years because she used me, was two-faced towards me and when I started saying no, she started treating me badly. Would ignore me, talk ill of me. Didn't come to our wedding, tried to stop it from happening. She recently had some life changes so we said she could stay here for a week. In February. I must add that it's her house but we are on a verbal lease so we are protected by laws. Within two days of her being here, she started redecorating. Was putting up her own ornaments, own curtains, etc. After four days she and my partner had an argument about me. Within a week, we had a huge fight but we were okish after that. She had an op in March and the whole way to the hospital, she moaned about how we're letting the place fall apart. She believes as the tenants, we are responsible for repairs and maintenance so we did the bare minimum. I kept quiet about the redecorating, ignored her negative comments and insinuations, insults, etc. One morning, my partner and I argue. My partner leaves for work, my in-law tries to find out what the fight was about. I tell her it's none of her business, close the door and go to my bed to cry. She barges I in, asks what's wrong and I tell her again, it's not her business, please respect that I want to be alone, and also you can't just walk into a room like that. Doesn't she blow up on me, telling me I must leave and that I am so disrespectful to her, etc. After this, my partner offers to rent her a place elsewhere. I ignore her from that point on. Then I find out after that she spent hours badmouthing me to a cleaner she made us hire. Not just me, but my family too. Called me a dirty white, called me racist, called my family racist, said we are dirty, we live like pigs, I'm a lazy cook, I can't pick up a broom, the dogs have more rights than her, ripped us to shreds. Also, she keeps telling my partner that they will see that she's right about me, don't be blinded by love, what kind of coward doesn't defend their mother, my partner barely knows me. We say nothing to her about the badmouthing. She has another op in April. She asks my partner after this op why don't I like her. My partner tells her that it's because she said things about me and she denies everything. Even though my partner heard the her. One day I'm in the kitchen when she claims to my partner she said nothing so I confronted her. She called me a racist to my face. My partner tells her to leave, she can't talk to me like that. My in-law says fine, she'll leave but then rather, moves everything out the garage into the guest room, and moved the guest room things into the garage for her to live there. And she's been there this whole time. She still expects the full rent, we paid two-thirds s of it this month, why must we pay full rent? We can't use our guest room or garage. We can't use half the garden because it's on her side. She cries that she can't afford not to have the one-third we didn't pay, but just spent thousands to renovate the garage. She is using our fridge, our bed, our microwave oven, our spare TV, our electricity, our internet. So two to three is fair. Considering she actually told my partner if she had to live there, we wouldn't have to pay at all. Today, we get served with a letter from an attorney that we need to move out in 30 days. In the letter she claims that she moved in here and that we forced her into the garage, it's not desirable for her so we must leave. What a liar, also how could she afford an attorney? We will leave but she's the worst. 
As bad as it is, see this as a blessing. Move, take everything of yours with you. Including light bulbs, toilet roll microwave, TV, tools, cutlery, napkins, etc. etc. petty etc. Make sure all utilities you pay for are cut off on day after you leave too. Let her arrange to set that all up in her name. Then go 100% NC and live your best life. Good luck. I've been wanting to leave for ages but this is my partner's childhood home and I think it was difficult to come to that decision. So I'm glad it was made for us, but not like this. We're planning on moving closer to my, functional, smiley. You rent from her, move your stuff out, take your name off of everything, get a P.O. box for your mail. Move all the bills into her name regardless, stop auto payments on utilities, cable slash internet, and phone and let her stew. Oh we'll be stopping everything. I'm even going to take our router with. She's older so she's not going to have a clue how to set everything up, she's going to have to pay someone to buy a router and set up for her once the internet has been reconnected. Honestly, I just move. Flat out leave. You do not want her to decide to go through with an actual eviction because then you will have trouble getting a new plaque. What someone else said about cancelling the utilities on the day you move out. Internet, too. Change the streaming passwords when you leave and force logouts of all devices. All of them. Claim the moral high ground and tell her that you have done so when you have your new place. That way you didn't cut the power without warning. Make sure that you password the utilities that you have moved. Actually, consider moving the utilities rather than simply shutting them off. Goes back to moral high ground. Get a P.O. box now and start moving your mail. Be sure and file a change of address form. Pull copies and supporting documentation for your tax return and change all of those addresses. Some things you can easily forget because you only get them in February. Says the person who continues to receive tax documentation for the people who moved out in 2016. Consider paperless. Time to immediately repossess everything she is using of yours and remove it to where she can't take it back otherwise she'll try and claim it's hers when you move out. Also change all passwords for internet and streaming services shut off the electrical breakers for the garage and get her crap out of your fridge. Then move out and cut this final tie to her and she will no longer have any chess pieces on the table. This house is so electrically screwed that there are no separate circuit breakers for the garage. The lights are on the same circuit as the lights in the lounge, the plugs on the same circuit breaker as the plugs in the kitchen. But I have been keeping the geyser off. I don't need hot water. Film the house empty before you leave for the last time. Make sure it is time stamped, your phone will do this. Message her and tell her you are out as soon as you walk out the door the last time. I can see her going after damages, especially things she thinks you should have fixed even though you were the tenants. But you want evidence that you didn't destroy the place. I never thought to film before but that is a great idea. I did already state in the letter back to he attorneys that we didn't do an entry inspection so by our laws, she has no claim to anything or no right to claim damages because there's no record of what was broken before we moved in and what wasn't. But you never know with her. Make sure you take all of your things that she is currently using, bed, microwave, fridge, TV, etc., cancel any and all utilities in your name, in my state you can call the companies and specify which date you want them turned off on your accounts, and then forward all your mail to a P.O. box. Film the house as you are leaving, going through each room, and film yourselves leaving the keys and any other items. Better safe than sorry in situations like this. I already told my partner to go take our TV back in the meantime. She can watch things off her phone or laptop. The nerve. And she's got my recently deceased grandmother's dressing table in there, the TV is on it. Filming the house is a brilliant idea. 
Take everything that's yours, put a stop to any bills that are in your name, and move as soon as you can. This is not going to get better, it could maybe blow over this time, but it would only be another problem later, and then another, ad infinitum. I'm not sure how a verbal lease would stand up in court, if things got so far, as it would be one person's word against another, and she has already shown herself to be untruthful. Go as soon as you can afford to. We can see how the dominoes are falling into place, this was all just a big fat setup. If she is using your internet or streaming services, change the passwords immediately. She does not deserve any nice extras that you are paying for. Ja good idea. I didn't even think to do that. She is using our fridge, our bed, our microwave oven, our spare TV, our electricity, our internet. Take it all. Leave her with nothing. Maybe trash or broken things. If she can't afford her one-third rent how will she pay full? But then again how can she pay for an attorney unless she's lying about finances as well? Go and see and if your partner wants to see her then he can go alone. If they leave trash or broken things behind, she could claim that they intentionally destroyed the house and go after them for damages and make them pay to remove everything. Not even trash. What op doesn't want should go to the trash, period. Break it before throwing away, so she doesn't even pick it back up. Also, NC for OP. And not help her at all, for no reason. MIL kicking us out, an update. So I posted last week about my MIL who came to stay in the home we rent from her, for what was supposed to be a week or so, and then ultimately ended up going to an attorney to have us kicked out. She hasn't spoke to my partner since, but this morning they bumped into each other at that gate. So how's this you guys? She said she's forced to do this, because I am switching off the power to the garage when my partner isn't home. I mean. That just shows how little she thinks of me, that she thinks she can make up such a story in the hopes my partner believes her. Why does she even think I have the time for that? I run a household and a company. The garage isn't even on its own circuit breaker, the plugs are connected to the kitchen plugs and the lights are connected to the lounge mains. So that's not even feasible to do without inconveniencing myself, which I am not prepared to do because I'm not so spiteful a person that I am prepared to put myself out. My therapist thinks it's a last attempt for her to try get my partner to I don't know, suddenly after 19 years see I'm a terrible, terrible person. It didn't work and it just spurs me on to expedite the moving process. I've packed up about 80% of the house, I can't do any more because we don't know how long we're going to be here for so I can't pack up everything. She'll regret it when you've gone because she had at least some control over your life since you were on her property. Once you're away, you can break away and she can't do anything about it. Before you leave I'd make a video or photos of how you left the property so she can't trash it and claim you did it. Good luck. Before you leave I'd make a video or photos of how you left the property so she can't trash it and claim you did it. This 1000x. And if you have an impartial neighbor, I would have them do a walkthrough with you, and get video or photos of them with you at that walkthrough. That way there's a witness and evidence of the witness with you. I'm so sorry you're going through this crap. Best of luck. So sorry you're going through that. She sounds just awful. I'm glad you'll be out soon though. When you leave, make a video of a walk through verbally documenting that everything is in good shape, and mention in the video the date and time, and email her as well as yourselves the video, just showing everything that the house looks good as we're heading out. Proactively defend yourself against MIL trashing the place and claiming you did it and suing you for damages. 
Yip, going to make a video of each room plus us leaving the property in one go so she can't accuse us of making the video then trashing the place or something. This is a great idea. I wanted to add on to the advice about recording the condition of the house when you move out. MIL sounds vengeful enough to make up all sorts of house damage, so in order to ensure there is no question of the condition of her property or of when you took the video, I strongly suggest you get a copy of that day's newspaper and include it in as much of the video you can, maybe with your so holding it as you pan the rooms. Make sure you get video of the plumbing under the sinks, the water heater, and ceilings. Get footage of the floors, light fixtures, everything, as well as turn on faucets and flush the toilets to show that the drains are unclogged. Film the garage door opening and shutting, and of you guys leaving your keys on the counter before walking out for the last time. You should do the same when you move into a new place too, BTW. I suggest getting a storage unit now and moving your stuff into it little by little, sentimental and irreplaceable items first so she doesn't have a chance to damage or toss them away. Open a postal box and change your mailing address now. I don't know how long such changes take effect in your country but best to do this ASAP so the post office and people who mail things to you have time to process it. You may want to keep the postal box as your only mailing address indefinitely so you don't have to change the address a second time. Leave JNMIL your attorney's office as your forwarding address. Your attorney will charge whatever they charge to be the intermediary but that's better than her having your new address. I would block her phone number and social media so she can't contact you, though your partner will have decide for themselves how much contact they want with their mother. Don't leave furniture or anything that you don't want. She could claim you left her a dirty house or try to charge you storage fees, if that sort of thing is legal where you are. Best to throw slash give away slash sell anything you don't want to keep. Leave her house clean and completely empty of anything belonging to you, not for her sake but so you can walk away from the situation knowing you did the correct thing and didn't give her a reason to harass you. She's going to have shocked Pikachu face when you move out and take all your stuff with you, as well as quit paying the bills. My guess is son and or sister won't be helping with anything. Make sure you document everything. None of her other children have helped her at all. And she's got like, three or four other kids. My partner doesn't even know how many there are. Extinction Burst Once you are in a new place, you will have have no reason to ever have anything to do with her again. And I cannot wait. I said to my partner we will not be fooled again. If she comes to us in 10 years time asking for help, we're turning her away. I think she's doing you a favor, even if she doesn't intend to. Now, you won't be worried about being tied to your MIL in any way other than she birthed your husband a long time ago. She's taking away any power she had over your choices now and it's going to be amazing after you get moved out. I'd contact the lawyer and ask for the date you have to be out by. Find a new place and get moved as quickly as possible. I think she expects a fight from you and she wants to make you angry to play the victim. She really wants DH to blame you and I wouldn't be surprised if she approached him and offered to let him stay if he broke it off with you. However, it'll be nice not to have to worry if she will make a stink about her property and what you've done there or that she does so much for you by renting you that property. Enjoy the separation and getting away from her. She's showing her true colors and I hope DH can see that and go NC with you or VLC. Wait till she figures out she cut off her nose to spite her face. She's an idiot. We don't know what her plan is, 
but we can only speculate that she's getting her sister or her unemployed son to come here. No surprise, given she's lying through her teeth and the lie doesn't even make sense. She's making up things you do to her when she's the one who's the problem. I sure hope your partner sees how toxic she truly is. I'm also glad you're getting out from under her control and you can go and see with her if you so choose. Yes, the fog cleared after only two sessions of couples therapy. Plus M.I.L. dug her own grave with her outlandish comments and her constant digs at me all the time. M.I.L. kicking us out, we found a place. So we have found a place. It wasn't our first choice, our first choice has a squatter now, hopefully we can revisit that place in a few months. It's close to my partner's work, in the opposite direction of where we live now. If all goes to plan, we are moving in this weekend. It is a gorgeous house with too much space, but that's fine. I'd rather live in a half-empty house than where I'm not wanted or respected. My MIL has since insisted that we don't actually have to move, that she went to the attorney as an impulse and she was just angry at the time. My partner seemed to believe that, until I said what kind of person wakes up one morning, takes the time to contact attorneys, sets up an appointment, pays for the consultation in subsequent letters, to kick their own child out, and then still says it was an impulsive decision. A liar, that's who. I could use some advice though, this isn't quite related to the MIL but you all know the story so well here, it's the best place. We've been here for many years and I'm struggling with leaving some of my pets behind. Not living pets, since we've lived here we've had a few pets die and one was cremated as we had her put down, but the others died unexpectedly at home. Almost every day I greet their burial sites and it is killing me, absolutely killing me, knowing I have to leave their bodies behind with this poisonous woman. I legitimately ugly cry knowing I have to do this. Over and above this, four years ago one of our cats went missing here too and I've always kept hope that he would stroll back home one day, he was the most beautiful chocolate point Siamese and I think he was stolen out our driveway. I don't know how to cope with these feelings and not feel like I'm abandoning my pets. This isn't the first time we've moved home with pets buried in the garden, this one just hits harder because I'm older and the circumstances. Someone suggested digging their bodies up which is just a huge no for me, someone else suggested taking some of the soil by their graves with us and using it to plant a meaningful flower in the new place. I like that suggestion, I was bought a rose called, my granny, after she died last year and it would be lovely to repot that with my pet soil, but it's not that comforting enough to me. Any advice? Thank you all for being my shoulder to cry on and an open ear during this difficult part of my life. Here's another suggestion besides taking little pots of the dirt and stardust your pets have transformed into. When you're at Amiel's home for the final walk through and round up check for overlooked belongings and you're certain you'll be going straight to your new abode, go out to visit that plot of earth one more time. Talk to them. Tell them you're moving into a brand new home, so, if you want to go with me, come on. It's time to leave. If you want to stay, I understand. You do what's best, and I love you. I'd like to think they'll find their way to you if that's where they want to be. That's a lovely suggestion, I will do that. Thank you. My MIL has since insisted that we don't actually have to move, that she went to the attorney as an impulse and she was just angry at the time. Well MIL until you get successful treatment for your, uh, anger issues, we have to be responsible and make sure we have a secure home where your mental illness won't be a possible cause of making us homeless and where our presence won't be a trigger for your episodes. Best of luck with the therapy. LOL she'll never admit she needs help. Even after after she said about me, her number one question about me is, why doesn't she like me? Like, why is it even a question? One thing you could do is get one of those large multi-photo picture frames and fill it with photos of those pets as a kind of photo memorial to them. 
Then when you move, you can still greet them daily, via those photos. Maybe include a nice photo of the grave site as well. I'd argue that it's not their bodies that's worth cherishing, it's the memories that you have of them. Bodies are transient and can't be taken with you, but the memories are forever and go where you go. That's what's important, and that's what the photos will inspire. This. I started doing memory statues and pictures after a few traumatic moves and it's been awesome. I also have a bracelet a dear friend had made for me with charms for each of my pets so if I need to have them with me I just put two in and it's like carrying them along. I buried my grandmother's ashes in the garden at my mom's house, and we planted a rose bush on top. My mom has now sold her house and is moving in a couple weeks. But it's okay, because I anticipated that happening at some point. In my mind, my grandmother has now become one with the earth, and no matter where I am, ever, when my feet are on the ground I am now connected to her forever. Perhaps you can take a similar outlook. Also, my mom is relocating the rose bush to her new house, as you talked about doing with yours. That is a beautiful outlook indeed. Wow. Good luck with the move. I've left countless buried pets over the years. It's hard, but you know, it's only their shell that's buried. Their spirits have moved on, and their memory will always be with you, in your heart. The place where they're buried is just for remembrance, make your own remembrance place at your new home. Plant a little memorial garden of catnip, paint a river stone with the likenesses of your pets, make it a place where you can remember and honor them. Thank you. Once we've moved and I've got this whole setup done I'll be sure to update with all the beautiful suggestions I've received. I am such an animal person, and it has wounded me to the core whenever I've had to move and leave beloved pets in their resting places. That being said, I firmly believe that their spirits have followed me in my travels, like furry little guardian angels. I'm sure yours have and will continue to do so in the future. I do like the idea of carrying some soil with you for a little memory garden. Best of luck and much happiness in your peaceful new home. It's comforting knowing others know how I'm feeling. Thank you for your comment. I think you should take some soil from each of their graves in a pot with you and plant something in the pot that you can keep as a living memorial to the ones you love. Their spirits will travel with you and the plant pot will give them a little place to anchor to so they can always be with you. I'm sorry if this comes across as too woo-woo but I genuinely believe that's what will happen. They want to be with you, not her, so just be sure to give them a little home and they will go with you. That's a really lovely suggestion. I'm glad you thought of it. I've received so many lovely ideas here, thank you. Definitely going to plant some of my favorite plants with them. Maybe some small trees because I feel a tree will last longer. Every time a minor accident befalls her in that house it was one or more of your pets who influenced it. Or. They fled their mortal shells and their bond to you and memories will keep them with you always. Here there or anywhere and at any time. Their shell have turned into new life that will feed other life and be turned into new different life as the wheel of life turns. I like both. Number two is probably the healthiest but you do you. LOL I do like the idea of them causing nonsense for her. I'm not usually spiteful like that but hey, she caused this mess. When you move, make a little site at the new home, yes you may not have the physical remains but it's okay. They are still in the same soil in a way just a different location. Their memories are what are more important to remember. You can make them a proper little memorial as well. It's not gonna be tainted with bad memories or sad memories because of your mill. You can decorate it with their favorite things or colors etc that remind you of them. It's something you can own and take with you everywhere. No matter where you move that little memorial you created can go with. You're right. This place has been tainted. 
Same soil, different place. I like that. MIL kicking us out, just a vent. My sounding board. I. Just need to vent about my monster in law. I can't seem to post. anywhere else because everyone no one can see past her medical issues and thinks that it's okay for her to behave so terribly. So we have signed our lease agreement and are going to get the keys on Thursday. I can't remember if I said in the last post but it's not the house we originally were going to go to, it's a house that was advertised last minute, around the corner from my mom, and it's the same price as what we're paying now. Granted the garden is much smaller and it's a bit close to a main road so I am nervous for my cats, but I'm thinking of doing a whole catio thing for at least two months. Anyway. I just need to vent, as I say. As we approach our moving date, my MIL and partner are talking more and more. She is still insisting we forced her hand with the whole attorney's letter, is claiming that she thought she was coming here for a fresh start, but I have just treated her so badly that she has no choice but to kick us out, but is claiming we can stay. So which one is it? But my argument is that she has not spoken to me in 13 years and now suddenly, when it suits her, she wants a fresh start and a family unit. And my partner is like, yes, but it's a dark time for her, that's why. And I can sympathize with that but she did not come here with the intentions she claims. Reason being is that, before her first stop even, she was already talking ill of me and the way we've looked after her house, way better than she has. I was still bring civil to her while she's chewing my partner's ear off about me behind my back. I can admit it was a difficult adjustment period, and it was hard and I didn't enjoy her being here. But nothing I've done warrants how she has carried on. Calling me a dirty white, telling people I'm racist, calling my family dirty, telling my partner they don't really know me, saying my dad is racist, mocking me, joking she's going to throw my clothes out, bragging how she uses bleach around my birds when we specifically told her not to, feeding the dogs, who have fought multiple times in her presence because of this, when we have told her not to, because she doesn't know how to give them snacks so they don't fight, find fault in everything I do. Rearranging MY home, talking smack about how I spend my money, telling people we let the dogs pee on the bed. And finally, going to the attorneys. What family does that? So I told her off when she came into my room without knocking, is that really so bad that it warranted this? And she is still lying about me. I am doing things for my partner, she is the beneficiary, and instead of being grateful about it she complains that I'm not doing a kind deed to her standards. Like I made an adjustment on a plug for her last week, left the white plug on a green bucket specifically so she see it. She goes and tells my partner that she almost didn't see it because I left it on the white table. And my partner is like, but did you get it? And all she can do is complain that she almost didn't because of a lie. My partner partner doesn't believe her per se, but like I say the more time they spend together, the more I have to hear that well, MIL had a point that she came here looking for family. MIL had a point that if it weren't for her health she wouldn't have stayed. And it's like, no. Her whole plan was to run me out the house. From the moment she took down MY curtains to put up hers, and the moment she complained that we said we don't have space for her furniture but we've got space for our own furniture, I knew that she came here to get her house back. She doesn't seem to be preparing to get any of her own furniture up here or from wherever she claims it is. Hopefully she does that this week because I have wanted my partner nothing of ours is staying. I'm not doing her any favors, she has been warned and I don't care if she ends up sleeping on the floor. Hi OP, congratulations on signing the lease on your new home. It was obvious from the get-go that Myel was moving in for good, not that week she first claimed. 
Hopefully you and DH stay in couples therapy because he's already slipping into accepting her lies. She just wanted a family, my Aunt Fanny. Her definition of family didn't include you, not ever. I wish you patience as she starts manipulating him to cater to her as she needs his help in setting up her living arrangements and in maintaining it as time goes on. OMG I'm not at all surprised she's twisted things to be the victim. When are y'all moving? I'm just so relieved for you that y'all found a place, close to your folks even. Your partner is having amnesia, forgetting the bullsh asterisk T coming from JNMIL the last several weeks. Partner should write themselves a letter when they're really angry at JNMIL, reminding them not to fall for her bullsh asterisk T anymore. Defending JNMIL that pisses me off. I'm so glad you are done. I'm sorry I may have just misread but is she moving in your new house or? I was having a hard time following this. We're the ones moving, but her furniture is sitting in storage somewhere. She's been surviving on our furniture for the last few months and I'm making sure we take every single thing back when we leave. It seems like the house they're currently staying in is her house. But they just signed a lease on a new place so they're going to move. At least I'm pretty sure that's what she meant, not going to lie it took me a minute to understand too. Grinning face with sweat. Since she's a liar you can assume everything she says isn't true. Like her saying she has furniture in storage somewhere, are you sure she's not just saying that while holding your stuff from the guest room hostage? Has she even given your stuff back that she moved into the garage? You mentioned a table that belonged to your grandma, the bed, microwave, and the spare TV you had in the guest room. Is she still using your things? Taking advantage of your Wi-Fi and streaming services? She doesn't deserve any kindness from you. I ask because if you leave it up to her to give your stuff back, she'll try every trick in the book to keep it. You make her life easier since you're paying for everything while she gets to be awful to you and manipulates your husband into using you as well. I'd be taking MY property back because based on your post history it doesn't look like your partner will do it. No, no dark time or operation gives you an excuse to be an asshole to someone else. I'm glad you have found another place to live and get a fresh start without her, she doesn't deserve you. I hope you have a successful and easy move, ha. Huh? Moving is its own pain. Wow. I've been following your story from the beginning. I also understand the frustration of hubby beginning to believe her lies. But relief has a specific date now. Hearty congratulations on landing your new place. It really is frustrating. More so because my partner knows and acknowledges MIL is sneaky and manipulative but still falls for it. Has not yet reached the point where they don't entertain the conversation at all. But thank you so much, I literally cannot wait to leave. Congrats on the new place, I hope it's far from hers. If it's close I wouldn't let her help move things to the new place or let her stay there until her house is fixed up. At least you took her power away, I bet she thought you'd move and her son would stay with her. Congrats. Also, there are videos on YouTube for building non-permanent KDOs, so that your new landlord should approve it. Good luck and soon you'll both be free. Ah, uh, okay regardless I'm sore you're doing with this. MIL kicking us out, we've left. So. We've moved out. It took the whole weekend because my partner couldn't get off work. My younger sister helped me on Friday, then my mom, younger sister, her boyfriend and even my aunt helped me on Saturday until my partner could come home. Sunday my older sister and her wife helped me, and then my younger sister even helped unpack a bit so we could function. We had a massive water leak our first night here so we had to go shower at my mom's house, which wasn't an issue considering we're all so close now. Moving the animals was a bit of an issue. Our one poor dog was so confused he stood there in the empty lounge and refused to leave.
The cats were difficult, but they're now starting to explore the new house. I will be building them a small catio ASAP, then they can have free reign of the property after six weeks. My mother-in-law spent a lot of time crying, apparently. Whenever I saw her she seemed fine, but my mom, bless her heart, went to talk to her on Saturday and she said it was just tears, tears, tears. But my MIL tried to tell my mom even it's about how she was treated. My mom told her it's a two-way street and my MIL tells her she doesn't know what she did wrong. I mean. And the story has changed there several times. So, first she doesn't want to bring her own furniture up because she's going to be leaving anyway. Then, she has to stay until the house is rented out or sold. Then, when my partner tells her she can use the furniture she was using until the weekend, to sort herself out, she says she's getting a bed delivered today, Monday. Then my partner tells her that they'll save up and buy the house and my MIL says she was going to give the house to them but she needed to see if she's be looked after first. Now all of a sudden, the house she was going to buy has been sold and she doesn't know what to do. My partner also wondered today, why is her stuff in one province when she actually said she was going to go to a different one? Because it's all just stories. I don't begrudge her her home. I just don't like the way she took it back. Here's to some peace and quiet. Keep on your guard. It sounds like MIL might still think there's a chance she can move back in with you if she guilts the right person or causes enough chaos in her housing situation. Yeah, that'll go over well. I know I just kicked you out of my house, but I need somewhere to stay so you have to take me in. Well, luckily there legit isn't any space for her here and there's not a chance she will invite us back knowing that I will come with. Glad you're out and please don't buy her house. She'll never accept it is yours. I don't want to, I'll never accept it's mine either to be honest. This isn't the first time I've had unhappy experiences there and I don't want to have that over my head there always. Yay for you guys. Glad you're out. Sounds more and more like she thought the eviction letter would make you cower and turn into her minions, and now that you've left she has no plan for taking care of herself or living alone. Stupid games, stupid prizes and all that. I agree. I think she wanted us to beg her to let us stay. Anything for her to have more control and power. She doesn't know what to do. Why is she acting brand new? She sure knew what she was doing when she paid a lawyer to throw y'all out. When I heard that I was like, please. Please. How many times did she say she wasn't going to be chased out her house, now all of a sudden she doesn't know what to do with it. Good luck to her, there's a lot of maintenance that she neglected to do. Glad you're out. Moving is hard and moving with small kids, babies and or pets is harder. If someday you move again, check out Jackson Galaxy's video about moving with cats. It might also help with your dog too. Shame our one cat was pretty okay because this was her fourth move. The two others didn't take it well at all though and I couldn't find decently priced cat carriers anywhere, not even second hand. Definitely going to invest in some of those for next time too. I forgot all about Jackson, used to love watching his show. I love a good success story. Me too. Even my partner seems happier already, bar for the last minute sob story their mother told them. Congrats on your escape. Thank you. Now it's just a matter of setting up the new place. You are out. Congratulations. Thank you so much. MIL kicking us out, the drama continues. Original. It's been a few weeks since I updated. I thought once we were out we'd go back in a week or two, get our stuff back, get our deposit back and live happily ever after. I was wrong. 
We've been living out a cooler box since moving out because our main fridge slash freezer is too big for the kitchen so we've got it in the garage. We have a smaller fridge which will fit perfectly, but MIL refuses to give ours back. She also still has my dressing table, this dresser belonged to my grandmother and it's the first anniversary of her death today. And MIL refuses to give it back. She also will not return our deposit. I sent her attorneys an email on Monday to say this hasn't been paid as yet and they replied that their mandate has ended, but must have told her anyway because they phoned my partner screaming blue murder about how we never paid for water, what has she done to me, blah blah blah. And we must come get our fridge and other stuff and if I have a problem with her, I must speak to her. Tuesday I phone her. She hung up on me three seconds into the call. Has been ignoring my phone calls and messages since. I go with my sisters to go get my stuff back, she refuses to let us into the property. My sister speaks to her very nicely on the phone last night, while rolling her eyes at the stuff MIL was saying. Asks my MIL very nicely can't we at least get the dressing table, it's our grand's first anniversary of her death tomorrow and my mother really wants it. My MIL says she knows it's my mother's, but she won't be bullied and starts crying on the phone. My sister ends the call on a positive note, wanting to give her the benefit of the doubt that she will be cooperative today. She was wrong. She's ignoring all our calls. I've tried twice, my younger sister has tried three times plus sent messages, my older sister has tried twice and also sent a string of messages. Then my partner messages that MIL is getting a bed today, please can we give her a few days on the fridge because she needs it and there's no second hand one immediately available anywhere. I say fine, but your mom has to ask me. No word. So I send a message to her about an hour ago that we will come get our dressing table today. Not may we, not can we. We will. If she doesn't open for us tonight, I will send her a message while we are outside informing her of my intentions to then go to the courts and get a rave indicatio against her and unless she then wants the police to come drag the stuff out her house for all the neighbors to see, she best open up. I can't believe I have to fight so much for my stuff, and I told my partner I didn't want to leave the items there. My partner has completely given up on this situation, just says, my mother is full of shit, this isn't my business anymore. I'm at my tipping point here. Edit, we got my grandmother's dresser. She initially didn't want to let us in, my poor sister, who was very close to our grandmother, was in the verge of tears at the possibility of having to leave it. So when my MIL started to go back into the house, I was like hell no and I slammed on the hooter. She waved us away, to shoo us, and I kept hooting. And I hooted and hooted and hooted. She came back up to the gate, my sister begged and pleaded with her and eventually she was let in. Then she said we can get everything else by Sunday. If this isn't your just a partner's problem then why is he being a flying monkey, making you agree to not get your fridge on his mother's behalf? Wow how convenient. I'd trade him for all my stuff back and move on. I would have the police come escort you to her house to get your things. Let her tell the police no and find out what happens. Having a surprise police escort is the way. I usually don't advocate for the police being there, a cab but in this case, it might be the shove MIL needs to realize that it's illegal and a little thing called theft. I'm not sure why you are putting up with your partner taking his mother's side in this. Tell him he either deals with her and gets your stuff back now or you are involving the police. Then follow through. You don't need to be dealing with this crap and he has let it go on for far too long. If she wants to play petty games you need to meet her where she is at. She went to a lawyer months ago. Time for her to get a wake-up call. I think she realized how serious we were when we pitched up there two days in a row for the stuff. 
and the incessant hooting, and the numerous phone calls from myself and my sisters. But I told my partner ignoring the situation doesn't help anyone. You partner is a waste of space. This is still his business. I cannot express how angry I am. I understand trauma bond, still their mom, etc., but come on. So I said, fine, if you don't want to get involved then you have no right to get angry at me for dealing with this in the way I deem fit. I want to hear nothing from you. I'd have a nice long chat with your husband too if I were you. Not his business anymore. So his mother mistreating his wife and withholding your belongings isn't his business. Weird because to me that would 100% be my business and definitely priority. Oh absolutely. My partner is not my friend tonight. Your husband doesn't get to just dip out because it's difficult. EFF that mess. Hopefully it will be over soon. Sounds like once you get the fridge and dresser, you can say good riddance mommy dearest. Well we're having a big chat now. It's been made very clear I'm not happy at all. This isn't my business anymore, OP you have a so problem right there. It's your grandmother's dresser and his mom is holding it hostage and seemingly since it's not something he values it's not worth his time. I said you don't see me holding any of your sentimental items hostage or threatening to throw them away, because they mean something to you. Been carting around boys of London jeans for years because of sentimental value. They understood then. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.